Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Rama. Hare Rama. Rama Rama. Hare Hare. Hare Hare. Hare Krishna. Yamu 
परमानंदे ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते वासुदेवाया ओम नमो भागवते So I'm very fortunate to be back in Ipo again. Arrivo. Nice to see. Do we have a question? Do we have a question? No. No. Okay, so seeing so many familiar faces, very nice. And also some new faces also. And nice to see Tejasu, Tejasu here, come back from JB with their mother. Their home is actually JB, right? <laughs> Your second home is Ipo. So, Krishna consciousness is ever fresh, and we are happy to see also how the Krishna consciousness movement is alive and well here in Ipo. We encourage all the devotees stay alive in Krishna consciousness. Right? Oh, okay, okay. We are developing the congregation in different fields. Some places it's Telugu, some places it's Tamil, some places Chinese, and some places Bengali. <laughs> we have a lot of different languages. But the purpose is the same. The languages may be different, but we're all one family under Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is the Father. Described in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Aham Vija Pradapitaha. I am the seat giving Father. So we are part, we have come from that seed. Krishna gave the seed that we have developed the, this body. We come to Krishna consciousness and we should understand part of the process, what's going on here in Krishna consciousness. It begins with Shraddha, faith. We have to have some faith. We believe in the importance of having a religion or having some religious belief. Sometimes some people, they believe in God, but they don't know who He is. We, we don't know anything about God. But we believe there must be somebody there there must be somebody behind this world. Just like we say, where did, it, where did this town come from? Ipo. Ipo is a very nice town. It's 
much more cleaner and more peaceful than Kuala Lumpur. Fortunately, in April, we don't have all the condominiums which they have there in Kuala Lumpur. I don't know, are they building condominiums? Yeah, he's coming up, but then also? Also? Oh. He's coming up. Horrible, yeah. <laughs> Terrible thing. So anyway, Ipo, there's a lot of trees, mountains, a lot of nature is here in Ipo. But at the same time, there's also a number of people who live here. So, you know, we could ask, where did it all come from? Where did Ipo come from? And the scientists, they may say, oh, there was a big bang. You know, the scientists, they have a big bang theory. They say everything came from the big bang. Right? You study physics. Did you get an A in physics, teacher? Teach you? you don't do physics, huh? you don't do chemistry or physics. Oh, you're more arts, is it? Oh. Okay. So anyway, people who study physics, they will know about the Big Bang Theory. Where did life come from? They say there was a Big Bang. And after the bang, then everything came. All the universe with all the planets and the sun and the moon. And it's all rotating very nicely. <laughs> So, of course, if we try to apply this theory to Ipo, where did Ipo come from? Oh, there was a big bang. And we woke up the next morning, and there it was, Ipo. Right? With all the roads, and the train station, and they even have an airport here, I think, now. There's also an airport for Ipo. And the, there's so many highways, and there's schools, and there's hospitals, and there's libraries, and there's a police force, and there's so many facilities. There's water supply, and electricity supply. All of these things are there. So who made all these arrangements? And even you can go to the market, you go in the supermarket and they have all, everything there you want. You can buy your rice, you can buy the flour, you can buy the meat. Everything is there in the market. Where does it all come from? Who arranged it? it did it just come from a big bang? Was it just a big bang and everything came about? Of course, that, that would be absurd, that would be ridiculous, it does not make any sense. But just like this microphone, where did it come from? Well, there's a factory, and in the factory there are technicians, and there are people who design, and other people who make the thing, put it together. And the same, the same is true for motor cars. We were coming on the highway from Kuala Lumpur and I saw the sign Proton City. Right? Proton City. And I, I didn't have to guess what they, what they make there, right? <laughs> Must be where they manufacture the Proton car. So, who makes them? Did it, is it just a big bang and the car comes? from a big bang? No, there are people, engineers, technicians, and they design everything, and then somebody, they have to put the parts together, and then they will test it and make sure it runs nicely. So behind everything, there are intelligent people, just like behind Epo, there are some intelligent people who are running the city and they're making sure everything is provided, the needs of everyone is given in the city.
all provided by the intelligent people. And the same way when we look at the universe and we see within the universe there are so many planets and they're very big. The huge planets, our Earth planet is one of the smaller planets in the universe. And they're rotating at a very high speed. But we don't know, we don't even notice how we're moving at a high speed and how the Earth is rotating. We're not even aware of all of these things because everything is so well made. Just like when you go in a good car, if you have a good car, even if the road is not very good, you, you don't notice the bumps very much, right? Because, because of the, suspen the, the suspension on the car is so good that it absorbs the bump and you're driving in the car, you don't notice it. And so, with good design, you're not aware of the speed. You're not aware of the bumps and everything. And similarly in the universe, there is very special design. And we could say the devas are there. There's a team of devas. And how many devas they say? 33 crore devas. That's a big team. You know, Amazon may be a big company and they have a lot of workers organizing everything. You want to buy things from Amazon, there's a whole network of people, whatever you want, your call will go to somewhere and, you, and they, they will arrange and it will be delivered to you, right? There's a big team in the company, there's, a, there's so many teams and they're all working for that one company. So in the same way, there are 33 crore devas in the heavenly planets. There are 33 crores, great demigods there. And they're doing a lot of different things. They're controlling our eyes. They're controlling our fire of digestion. They control our breathing, our health. It's all under the control of these different demigods or the devas. But, but these devas, they only control one, each deva is in charge of one aspect, one particular part of nature, just like Indra. He's in charge of the clouds and the rain. Whenever you come to Ipo, usually you get rain. It's quite a rainy place, you know? Like Taiping. Taiping is the, the wettest place in Malaysia, right? You get a lot of rain there. So here also in Ipo, you get good rain. We didn't see much rain in Kuala Lumpur, but you come to Ipo immediately, there's rain. There's mountains are here, Ipo hills, you know, so you get rain. It's, it's very nice, it's cooling and refreshing. If there's no rain, Kuala Lumpur, and, oh, it's so hot, so dry. But come to Ipo, it's more fresh. So Indra is in charge of the clouds. And similarly, you want to be a... a, a you want to study, then Saraswati is there. The goddess Saraswati, she's in charge of singing and dancing and studying different arts. So the goddess Saraswati, she can give blessings to people. There was one person, Keshav Kashmiri. He was a, a great pundit. He was called Digvijaya, means he conquered everywhere. And he was going everywhere to debate with people. And he was 
he was un undefeatable. And so he was a great devotee of the goddess Saraswati. But then one day he came to Maya, he came to Navadweep because 500 years ago Navadweep was an important center of learning. There were many colleges and pundits and there was many uh, vigilayas, you could say, you know, universities and where people would come and they would, the brahmanas would come and learn Sanskrit and they would learn the different philo philosophical systems like Nyaya, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was teaching logic, Nyaya. So there were many people, students there. So the Digvijay, Kish Kashmiri, he came there to Mayapur to challenge everyone. And everybody ran away. They were all afraid. Only Lord Chaitanya stayed to meet him. And when they had a debate, Lord Chaitanya defeated him. Lord Chaitanya showed mistakes in the words of the Kesha of Kashmiri. So the Kesha of Kashmiri was defeated. And he wondered how he could be defeated. So that night he went back and he prayed to Goddess Saraswati and he prayed to Goddess Saraswati, I must have offended you, this young boy, teenage boy, Nimai Pandit, he defeated me, I've been humiliated by him. But Goddess Saraswati told Keshav Kashmiri, no, you've not been humiliated. That teenage boy, he is my Lord and Master. So the point is, above all of the devas, there's one supreme being, the Param Ishwa. So that one supreme Lord, that is the worshipful Lord. That is generally we say Bhagavan. So we want to understand there is a Supreme God and we want to learn about Him, we want to worship Him and we want to develop our relationship for Him. But in order to come to understand God, the first thing is to understand who we are. If we don't know who we are, then we'll never understand who is God. So it's very important for us that we should read the books like Bhagavad Gita. Now Ipo is having a nice education center. Right? Ipo has become the center of learning for Malaysia. And devotees are encouraged to take courses and learn, particularly beginning with Bhagavad Gita to go through the Bhagavad Gita and learn the main points of the Bhagavad Gita. So, the education is important. Malaysia people spend a lot of money for education. You go to colleges, you go... You're not, not everybody is a big student and get nine A's or eight A's, right? Not everybody. And if you don't get a lot of A's, then you've got to pay, right? <laughs> you've got to pay for the education. And it's expensive. Education is big, big business. You go to universities, colleges, you pay a lot of money. And of course, Malaysian people, they like to go to foreign countries to study even. If they can't get the place here in Malaysia, then they go overseas. We know many doctors, they went to Indonesia, went to Madan and studied there. And then other people went to Russia or Ukraine and studied medicine there. Not everybody can go to 
England, or Australia, or America, that costs very big money. So, education is important, but the education which you get at the colleges, that is all material knowledge. And that is all knowledge to help you get a job so that you can find work in the material world. So you study things like computer programming, or you study law, or you study this and that, and then you get a job, you can find a job working somewhere, and this way you make some income to maintain your life. So that is material. But we need also spiritual knowledge. Spiritual knowledge is important for us because it will help us from going to hell. That is the problem. That there's a danger that if we don't make proper use of the human life, then the next life we will not get the human body. You'll lose the human form of life. Now we have a human body, and human life is for understanding God and understanding our relationship with Him. Now people, as they often say, Oh, why you worship Indian God? Some people think, why you're worshipping, you're not Indian. Why you're worshipping Indian God? So I have to tell them, God is not Indian. Yeah? That is ignorance to think that God is Indian. There's one God for everyone. Whether you're Indian or American or Chinese or Russian, whatever, it's the same God for everyone. But he has many names. And we see different parts of the world, they give God different names. So, in some countries like in the Middle East, they will call God as Allah. And if you go to uh, Europe or Spain, Italy, then they will say God is Jehovah or Mary, Mother of God. Mm. Right? Like that. Yeah. You know, Mary, Mother of God. And then there is also Jehovah and Allah and some people sometimes not very common, they may say God is the Buddha. So like that, and then in India, there are many names for God. And, and who is the God? Sometimes people in India think they're all the God. They don't know that there's one supreme God over everyone. They're They're thinking that all of the gods, all, of, all is one. So there's one, but there's also difference. And there's one supreme over everyone. That one supreme being, that is what we call, well, we give the name Krishna. Srila Prabhupada explains Actually, the concept of God, if you use the term God, it's not very clear. Well, who is God? There are many gods. So what do you mean God? So Prabhupada said better to use the term absolute truth. The absolute truth. That is the ultimate supreme. Absolute truth. Right? Jetoi Mm -hmm. We say in Chinese, absolute truth, uh, the, not relative truth. 
So we have to understand the concept of the absolute truth, that truth which is above everything, which never changes. Sometimes the truth can be relative. It's true today, it's not true tomorrow. It wasn't true yesterday, it's only true this particular time. But it's not really the fact. It's a temporary truth. So that there's a higher principle, there's the absolute truth. That which never changes. And we want to understand that truth. So that absolute truth is described to us in books like Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam. We want to understand who is God. Krishna says in the Bhagavad Gita, there is no truth superior to me. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is saying, seventh chapter, Madhaparataram Nanyat, there is no truth superior to me. There is nothing higher than Krishna. And then Lord Krishna describes how everything is resting on him, just like beads are on a thread. So we want to understand this fact, have faith in Lord Krishna. In Srimad Bhagavatam, the Srimad Bhagavatam, the very first verse is Satyam Param Dimahi. Satyam Param Dimahi. I meditate on that Satyam Param, the Supreme Truth. Dimahi. Medit I meditate on that Supreme Truth. We want to fix our minds also on that truth. And who is that, that truth? We should understand that truth, that is a person. It is not just simply some energy or just simply some light or some form which we imagine. We should understand that that truth is actually a person and he has a form which is transcendental full of bliss and knowledge. Just like we have a form, God also has a form. So, in order to understand these things, you have to come to Krishna consciousness. You have to take up this process. And it begins with hearing and chanting. You start to come to the temple, you come here, you have a little faith, that I can learn something here, that there's some good things going on here, I want to come, and you start to come, and then you start to regularly hear and to chant. And of course we give also the beads, like here, we give the beads in the bead bag, and then you start to chant regularly. And after you're doing that chanting regularly, and you've developed some faith in it, then at that time, then you can accept the spiritual teacher. As we're doing tonight, we're having initiation. We give the initiation, and we give the beads to the devotee, and we give them also a name, a spiritual name. Mother and father, they give the name of the body. But the, the spiritual teacher, he gives a name for the soul. And the soul will be described in names like Krishna Das, meaning servant of Krishna. Or Radha Dasi, servant of Radha Rani. Right? Servant, we are always the servant. Krishna is the master, we are the servant. So initiation is the beginning of our serious practice in the spiritual life. A number of you are initiated, I know. I hope you are practicing seriously and you want to go on. After initiation, 
then you come to the stage of removing the dirty things from the heart, getting rid of the anger and the greed and the lust and envy, all the dirty things which are in the heart. We want to clean them out by hearing and chanting. And then, after that, then the next stage is to become steady. You become steady in your practice. And then you get more taste. You start to develop a feeling of pleasure in these activities. And then you go on to come to bhava and prema. Bhava and prema are the topmost level of practice of devotion. And from prema, then prema goes on into many different levels of prema. There are eight different levels of prema. Right? Like anu, anubhava and uh, uh, it's only the top of Madana, 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 like that. The very ecstatic love of Krishna. So, the very topmost level, this is for Srimati Radharani and Lord Chaitanya and great devotees like that. But, Generally, these topmost levels are not for ordinary people like us. But we do want to try to come to the higher levels, to get rid of the things from the heart, to clean the heart, and to develop that love for Krishna. So it comes about by hearing and by chanting regularly. But to do good hearing and chanting regularly, you also have to follow some rules. One thing is, you should be a vegetarian. And not only vegetarian, but you should eat food offered to Krishna, to Sadam. We say krishna -terian. Not just vegetarian, but krishna -terian. And we don't eat onion in garlic. These things are very common when you go, if you go to a restaurant, they, have, they will say vegetarian food, but it will all be cooked with onion and garlic usually. So devotees of Krishna, we don't like to eat onion or garlic because they are very passionate and they just increase the passion which is there in us. So we want to avoid these things. So first is vegetarian, no meat, no meat, no fish and no egg. You have to be careful about eggs because they put eggs in many things. You buy bread, they'll put maybe eggs in the bread. You buy ice cream, they put eggs in the ice cream. You have to be careful what things you purchase because they often put eggs in the thing. Biscuits and so on. Noodles even. They often put eggs in the noodles. Be careful so we don't eat eggs. And second thing is no intoxication. Intoxication means things like alcohol and also things like coffee and tea. We don't like to take tea or coffee. People are surprised. Is that intoxication? Actually, yes, it's intoxication because they have caffeine and caffeine is a drug. Just like people take coffee or tea, they have to take it every day. They can't go without it. You get attached to it, you get addicted to having a cup of tea. One person told me they have to have a cup of tea just to get up in the morning. 
We can get up until they have a cup of tea. So that's the problem. That, so we don't want to be dependent on these things. So we don't take intoxication. Intoxication is also pride. We want to give up pride. We want to develop humility. That's also important quality, to be humble. So people become proud, they become intoxicated. So we want to give that up and become a humble soul. Think of ourselves, Lord Chaitanya said, to think of ourselves lower than the straw in the street. Our physical dimension Maybe, you know, maybe you're five foot six or five foot eight, whatever, you know, but what, what is your spiritual dimension? You're one ten thousand of the tip of the hair. So, we're very small and our ego should be the same size as the soul. We shouldn't be egoistic and think, I'm a six-footer. <laughs> no, we should think, I am one ten thousand of the tip of the hair. Very tiny. So that way we can be humble. And then, no gambling. Gambling means to waste time. We waste the human time gambling watching movies, watching Instagram, right? Now, I don't want to give a plug for this thing. Oh, what's that? I have to watch that. I have to be careful. If I mention all these things, people will go more interested. So there's so many devices, so many things to waste our time. So that's gambling. Gambling, because we don't know when we're going to leave the body. And if you're watching something not Krishna conscious at the end of life, it's not very good. So don't gamble. Don't waste time. And then the fourth thing, no illicit sex. Get married. Have children. We like children. You can see many children here today. So we like children. It's very good to have children and bring them up to be Krishna conscious devotees. That's very important. If your child doesn't become a devotee, then no point. Just a burden. But if your child is a devotee, then the child can take you back to God. So those are the four principles. So when people take initiation, we ask them to bow, to follow these four principles. And if they follow these four principles, then they can be, they can advance very quickly. Very quickly they can make advancement. And to help them advance, they have to chant every day. And we, have, we ask people to chant 16 rounds. People say, oh, 16 rounds, so many, oh, if only I had to chant four rounds, it would be much easier, I could do four rounds, but 16 rounds, oh, no, too many. Problem, but if you say, all right, then four rounds, and after some time you say, oh, it's too much, if it was only one round, I could do it. And then, say, oh, why one round? Just one mantra. If we just chant one mantra, it's enough. And like that, we we'll want to always reduce. So, Srila Prabhupada, anyway, requested everyone chant minimum 16 rounds. Takes a, about two hours, may take longer, but about that much time. Just like people who do meditation, they will sit and meditate for two hours. So our meditation is mantra meditation. We chant on the and we should chant for at least two hours a day. 
And if you have more time, you can chant more. And in this way you can always be Krishna conscious. Alright? So now we're going to give the beads and we will initiate the devotee. And then we will do the yaga. Alright? So there are four devotees coming in. Can I put the color?
तो इन्हीं में क्या करें नीचे They're taking birth in Krishna consciousness. Don't you have any attention? Thank Krishna to you. Need the links in the Shanghai Kaisha. So, Prabhu is the main guy. Mama gave him the Hari Govinda Das. Hari Govinda. And what is his main name? Yeah, name. Yeah. ลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทวะลาวิตาเทว
ಮಾಡ್ತೀನಿ ಮಾತೃಜಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಇಷ್ಟೇನ ಬಾಟ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ಸ್ So your name is Dhaneshwari Devi Dhanse. ಸಾಕಿ ಬೃಂದ ದೇವಿ ದಾಸಿ ಕೇ ನಾವು devotees some devotees can do kirtan slowly hare krishna ಹ್ಮ್ 